Imagine looking into a mirror that reflects more than light, a mirror that reflects time itself. Not glass, but gold. A vast, curved surface engineered with such precision that it can capture the faintest echoes of creation. When you peer into this mirror, you don't see yourself. You don't see Earth. You don't even see the present. You see the universe as it was when reality itself had barely begun to take shape, when existence was still learning how to exist. That is the true purpose of the James Webb Space Telescope. But when Webb looked deeper than any instrument before it, it didn't find what scientists expected. It didn't reveal a quiet, primitive universe. It didn't uncover cosmic infancy. It revealed something far more unsettling. A contradiction. A cosmic impossibility. For decades, cosmology followed a familiar story. First came the Big Bang, an expansion not into space, but of space itself. Then followed a long, silent era known as the Cosmic Dark Ages, when no stars yet burned and light had nowhere to travel. Only after hundreds of millions of years were the first stars supposed to ignite, slowly gathering matter into primitive galaxies. Complexity, scientists believed, required time, vast stretches of it. The earlier we looked, the simpler the universe should appear. Thin clouds of hydrogen. Unorganized matter. Chaos waiting patiently for gravity to shape it. But when Webb turned its golden mirrors toward a region of sky believed to be nearly empty, it captured something that should not have existed at that moment in cosmic history. A fully formed galaxy. Not a faint smudge. Not a collapsing cloud of gas. But a structured, rotating system of stars, with spiral arms, ordered motion, and even a massive black hole anchoring its core. This wasn't a galaxy struggling to form. It was already complete. Elegant. Stable. Alive with structure. And it wasn't alone. As Webb continued observing, more galaxies emerged from the ancient darkness, each one disturbingly mature. They weren't chaotic collections of stars. They were chemically rich, gravitationally organized systems that looked billions of years older than they should have been. It was as if the universe had skipped entire chapters of its own history. One question began to echo through the scientific community. What if our understanding of the beginning is fundamentally wrong? When astronomers first examined these galaxies, over 13 billion light years away, they expected barely detectable signals. Instead, they found brilliance. Spiral structures winding like ribbons of light. Dense cores pulsing with energy. Star clusters moving in harmony. These galaxies weren't in the process of forming. They had already formed. To understand why this is so disturbing, you have to understand how galaxies are supposed to evolve. Matter begins spread thin. Gravity slowly pulls it together. Stars ignite. Those stars die. New generations form from enriched material. Over billions of years, structure emerges. Complexity takes time. But Webb's data shattered that assumption. Finding these galaxies was like planting a seed in the morning and returning at night to find a fully grown forest. Not just one tree, but an entire ecosystem already in balance. And then came the spectral data, the chemical fingerprints hidden in their light. These galaxies weren't composed solely of hydrogen and helium, as early universe theory predicts. They contained oxygen, carbon, iron, elements forged in stellar furnaces and released only through supernova explosions, processes that require multiple generations of stars, processes that take immense time. Yet these galaxies were less than 400 million years old. The early universe wasn't slowly awakening. It was racing, burning, exploding, 
rebuilding itself at an impossible pace. The timeline didn't feel compressed. It felt broken. Then came the most shocking revelation of all. At the center of one of these ancient galaxies, Webb detected a supermassive black hole, over a billion times the mass of our Sun. In the modern universe, such giants exist because they've had billions of years to grow. They feed. They merge. They evolve slowly. But in the infant universe? Such an object shouldn't exist. Black holes are born small. Even under the most extreme conditions, collapsing stars, violent mergers, relentless accretion, their growth is limited by physics itself. Radiation pressure pushes back. Time becomes a constraint. No known natural process allows a black hole to reach billions of solar masses in such a short cosmic window. And yet, that is exactly what the James Webb Space Telescope began to see. Not subtle hints. Not statistical outliers. But unmistakable signatures. Warped starlight bent into arcs. Jets of violent energy tearing through space. Spacetime itself twisted around objects with the mass of fully grown gravitational titans. These black holes were not infants. They were not evolving. They were already complete. Older than they should be. Larger than they should be. Existing at a time when the universe was still supposed to be learning how to build. The implications were immediate and unsettling. Scientists proposed radical explanations. Primordial black holes, born directly from density fluctuations moments after the Big Bang. Exotic forms of matter that collapse faster than anything we've ever observed. Dark matter-driven growth mechanisms that bypass known limits. But every explanation came with a cost. Each required new physics. Unverified particles. Unprecedented conditions. The rules didn't just need adjustment. They needed rewriting. As Webb's observations expanded, the mystery deepened. These early galaxies weren't scattered randomly, as chaos-driven models predicted. They formed networks. Filaments. Repeating arrangements. Their structures followed mathematical ratios, spirals and symmetries eerily similar to the golden ratio. The same geometry found in seashells. In hurricanes. In plant growth. In biological systems on Earth. Was this coincidence? Or was the universe itself following hidden rules of order? Rules embedded so deeply that they appeared wherever matter was allowed to organize? High resolution imaging revealed something even stranger. What we once believed was early cosmic chaos now appeared structured, layered, recursive, almost fractal in nature. Patterns within patterns. Order emerging not slowly, but immediately. The early universe didn't look messy. It looked intentional. Then Webb made one of its most controversial detections, not inside galaxies, but between them. In the vast emptiness of interstellar space, regions once thought chemically dead, it identified complex organic molecules. Not simple compounds. Not isolated traces. But carbon-based structures associated with the fundamental building blocks of life. They weren't locked inside planets. They weren't sheltered in comets or asteroids. They were drifting freely, spread across cosmic distances, surviving radiation, enduring time itself. This discovery changed everything. It suggested that life's ingredients were not rare. They were not local. They were not late arrivals. They were present near the beginning. Chemistry advanced enough for life didn't wait for planets to form. It was already there, woven into the fabric of space. Life, it seemed, may not be an accident of circumstance. It may be a feature of the universe itself. 
And then came an image that silenced even skeptics. Six galaxies, arranged with astonishing precision. Equidistant. Balanced. Orbiting a shared center like petals around a cosmic flower. Astronomers called it the flower structure. Gravitational lensing was proposed. Statistical coincidence was considered. Unknown turbulence was invoked. But no existing model could reproduce its perfection. The geometry was too clean. The symmetry too exact. The probability too low. Some whispered a far stranger idea. That this wasn't random at all. That it was a marker. A signal. A structure designed not to influence the universe, but to be noticed. Seen only once a civilization reached the ability to truly observe. And finally, the most unsettling thought of all emerged. What if observation itself plays a role? Quantum physics already tells us that measurement changes reality. Particles behave differently when watched. Outcomes shift when information is extracted. What if that principle scales upward? What if building web didn't just reveal the universe, but interacted with it? Some researchers noticed subtle anomalies. Patterns that shifted depending on analysis techniques. Details that changed with observational frameworks. At first, it was dismissed as noise. But the inconsistencies persisted.